see when the witnesses will stand forth. He's saying, and that his affair would just dwindle away and die away. The Sheikh said, meaning that this religion, they thought, that this religion which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with, it would pass away and totally cease. Nothing would remain of it. Just like the rest of the calls and beliefs and false beliefs. Just like the rest of the calls and all the other beliefs which are false beliefs. Which, are, which live for a certain time and then they are cut off and they pass away when their followers pass away. And when their parties and their groups pass away, when they die. But as for the truth, then it will remain. No matter what trials it undergoes, and despite the occasional stakes, uh, despite the occasional states of weakness and the occurrences that happen with it, still the truth will remain and continue. So whoever thinks that the affair of the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, will ever dwindle away and vanish because of the disasters which strike the Muslims, whoever thinks this, then he has had an evil thought about his Lord. And Allah does not cause these disasters to occur to the Muslims in order to cause the followers of the religion to disappear and to cause the religion to disappear. No. Rather, Allah causes these disasters which happen to the religion and to happen to the people of the religion. He causes them to occur ibtila'an wa imtihanan as a test and a trial so that the people will turn back to him he the perfect and most high or because of a mistake which they have committed which they have fallen into so Allah wishes to draw their attention to it so that they can purify their ranks from all things which are foreign which have entered into them into their ranks and purify themselves from error so that they then turn back to Allah the perfect and most high and then Allah will return to them his aid and victory and establishment this is the way of Allah the mighty or the majestic and the most high this is his way in his creation and likewise Allah wishes to purify those who, who believe he wishes to purify them of sins and acts of disobedience so that they then go on to Allah purified having no evil left upon them this is the wisdom of Allah the perfect and most high he does not wish by the disasters which he causes to strike his servants the believers he does not wish by these disasters to remove the believers altogether or to cause their truth to pass away that which they are upon not at all Allah's wisdom refuses that rather he wants to confirm this truth and to remove anything foreign to it from it and he wants to remove from its people any acts that they are committing which are contrary to it so that they turn back to Allah the perfect and most high and return to him so when they do that then their honor and their position will return to them this is the way of Allah with regard to his creation right from the earliest times of the creation right until the last hour will be established so how very many things happened to the messengers and how many things occurred to their followers with regard to disasters and serious problems yet the final outcome will always be for them in their favor 
always and the truth will never pass away and all praise is for Allah he said he's saying this is also the thought of evil the thought that these hypocrites had this is described also as the thought of evil the sheikh said meaning with regard to a denial of pre-decree and the idea that events occur without the will of Allah the perfect and most high that things which happen disasters which happen like the, what happened at Uhud they claim it happened not because of Allah is wishing that and willing that to happen they say rather it happens without his will and without his decree and whoever thinks that then he has thought an evil thought about his Lord and he has described his Lord with inability and ignorance and lack of knowledge high is Allah above that which they say and he's saying and that is evil thought because it is a thought not befitting Allah the perfect the Sheikh said meaning thinking things about Allah which do not befit him he the perfect and most high means in this case here thinking that he does things without a wise purpose to think that Allah does actions just because he wants to without a wise purpose that is a thought not befitting Allah he's saying and not befitting Allah's wisdom and his being deserving of praise and of his true promise the Sheikh said because Allah the perfect and most high deserves praise for every condition he deserves praise for that which the servants dislike and for that which the servants love <coughs> because all that comes from Allah is something praiseworthy so Allah's sending his punishment upon those who deserve to be punished that is, that is Allah's adl his justice it is justice from him he the perfect and most high and he deserves praise for that and Allah is bringing destruction to the unbelieving nations is something which he deserves praise for he the perfect and most high because that is his jaza that is his due recompense to them <coughs> and Allah is sending blessings down upon the people of Iman and granting them victory and success and granting that to the people who follow his messengers this is fadl this is a favor from Allah the perfect and most high so Allah deserves praise for all of these conditions he deserves to be praised for that which the people like and for that which they find disagreeable because nothing from Allah is ever abath nothing, is, nothing that comes from Allah is ever without a wise purpose so the person who knows Allah and knows his names and his attributes and knows what praise of him necessitates then he will never fall into these errors in the like of these evil thoughts about Allah he will not fall into them no matter how severe his affair becomes and what straight and, and difficult circumstances he encounters because he will know that Allah does not do something except that which contains good so therefore he will have patience, he will have sabr and he will be satisfied with whatever Allah has ordained and decreed and he will await relief he will not despair of the mercy of Allah rather he will await and expect the mercy of Allah and the more severe 
is the calamity. The more severe the calamity becomes upon him, then the more he will expect and await Allah's mercy. Indeed, his hopes only increase the more the calamity worsens. Just as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Wa'lam anna nasra ma'al sabr, wa anna al faraja ma'al kurb, wa anna ma'al usri yusra." The hadith. Of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and know that victory comes along with patience, and relief comes along with calamity, and that with difficulty there comes ease. And this hadith that the Sheikh is indicating is one narration of the ha- the famous hadith of Ibn Abbas. Radiallahu anhuma, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him, "O oh young boy, let me teach you some words by means of which Allah will bring you benefit." Hadith that's in the forty hadith of Nawawi. Then this wording here is one narration of it, reported by Imam Ahmad, and it was declared Hassan good by Sheikh Ali Hassan. In his checking of Riyadh al-Salihin, and before him by Ibn Rajab, he also declared this hadith Hassan good. With this addition, the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and know that victory comes along with sabr, with patience, and that relief comes along with calamity, and that along with difficulty comes ease. Then the Sheikh said, "And Allah, the Majestic and Most High, says, 'Inna ma al usri yusra, inna ma al usri yusra.' So to Sharh, the ninety-fourth surah, ayahs five to six, with the explanation: Certainly, along with difficulty comes ease. Certainly, along with difficulty comes ease. And he says." فَيَجْعَلُ اللَّهُ بَعْدَ أُسْرٍ يُسْرًا Surah Al-Talaq, the 65th Surah, Ayah 7 With the explanation, Allah will make ease, Allah will bring about ease after difficulty. The Shaykh said, So, whenever the affair becomes severe, then it will be, relief will be granted. The more severe it becomes, then there will certainly come relief from it. Then the Sheikh said, As for the people of hypocrisy, and the people of unbelief, and the people of ignorance, then when disasters strike them, then they disbelieve in Allah. The majestic and most, uh, the mighty and majestic, they disbelieve in Him, and they despair of the mercy of Allah. And so therefore, when the Muslims were struck with disaster at the Battle of Uhud, then they said, I mean the hypocrites, they said these foul sayings. And he quotes the saying of Ibn al-Qayyim, So whoever thinks that Allah will cause falsehood to gain domination over the truth permanently, and that the truth will die away and pass away altogether, or who denies that whatever occurs, no matter what it is, whoever denies that it occurs with the ordainment and pre-decree of Allah. The Shaykh said, so here the Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah is just uh, repeating what he has said to confirm this very great affair. And he quotes the saying of Ibn al-Qayyim, or he denies that whatever Allah has decreed, will <coughs> then that is the thought of those who are unbelievers the Sheikh said so whoever thinks that Allah will cause falsehood to
to permanently take over the truth. Then he has thought this evil thought. Because it may be the case that sometimes Allah will temporarily cause falsehood to gain the upper hand over truth. But this is just something temporary. It is not something permanent. And the reason that he gives the upper hand to falsehood over the truth sometimes, temporarily, is for a wise purpose. And that wise purpose is so that the, pe the people of the truth should become alert and should correct themselves from any errors and any deficiencies which have, uh, which have come about in them. وَلْيُمَحِّصُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلْيُمَحِّصُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا The ayah, so that Allah should purify those who believe. And the Shaykh said, meaning, so that Allah should purify them from the filth of sins and disobedience by means of punishment which He sends upon them. Just as Allah, the Perfect and Most High, said, Whoever commits evil will be recompensed for it. Surah An-Nisa, the fourth surah, ayah 123. Whoever commits evil, then he will get punishment for it. The Shaykh said, And this greatly worried Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, when this ayah came down. And he said, Which of us does not commit evil, O Messenger of Allah? So Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is quoted as saying, Do you not suffer grief? Do you not suffer tiredness? Do you not suffer so-and-so? He, he quoted a number of things. So he replied, Yes. <coughs> he said, Then that will be your recompense. That will be a punishment. And with regard to this report, then it's reported by Al Tabari in his tafsir with a chain of narration that Sheikh Mukbil said, Rahimahullah, is disconnected in his verification of Ibn Kathir. This ayah from Surah An Nisa, fourth, fourth Surah, ayah 123. And likewise, Sheikh Al Albani, in his checking of Sharh Al Tahawiyyah, number 390, he said about this report with regard to Abu Bakr radiallahu an, its chain of narration is weak, but its meaning is correct. Then Shaykh al-Bani mentioned an authentic hadith about the sending down of this ayah with the same meaning. He brought the hadith and the hadith reported by Muslim. From a hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, that when this ayah came down, مَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا يُجْزَبِهِ Whoever does evil will be punished for it, or will be recompensed for it. He said, then it caused a severe effect upon the Muslims. So therefore Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Be moderate and strive to be upon what is correct. So in everything which befalls the Muslim, there will be an expiation. Even a slip of his foot or a thorn which pricks him. Reported by Muslim. <coughs> then back to what Shaykh al-Fawzan brings. He says, So Allah, the Majestic and Most High, He may give some recompense or even some punishment to his believing servant whom he loves and he may punish his servant because he loves him in order to purify that servant from sins so that the servant goes on to meet his Lord pure and clean and entering paradise but as for the unbeliever and the enemy of Allah then Allah continues to shower his favours upon him and to give him further and further room to transgress. And Allah withholds punishment from him until 
on the day of resurrection. He comes carrying all of his sins and will be from the people of the hellfire. So this is the wisdom of Allah the perfect and most high. Then the Sheikh said, so some of the people say, why is it that the unbelievers are favoured with all these blessings that they have and modern refinements and items which they manufacture and the fine weather they enjoy and the fine society they've got and the fruits and the trees and the crops whereas the Muslims are in the state they're in. Why is this? Then the person's evil thoughts lead him on to start thinking that the unbelievers because of all this are actually upon the truth and that Allah is pleased with them and that the Muslims are not upon the truth and that Allah is angry with them. Then he may apostatize from the religion altogether. The person who has these thoughts. So Allah the, Allah the Majestic and Most High, He gives the things of this world, the dunya, to those He loves and those He does not love. <coughs> but as for the religion, the deen, then Allah does not give it except to one whom He loves. And sending down His favors or sending down His punishments is not an evidence of his loving anyone or that he hates them or has aversion to them rather it, these things are just a test and a trial so Allah may punish someone whom he loves and he may shower favours upon someone he hates in this world that is وَلَا يَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّمَا نُمْلِي لَهُمْ خَيْرٌ لِأَنفُسِهِمْ إِنَّمَا نُمْلِي لَهُمْ لِيَزْدَادُوا إِثْمَا وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ مُّهِينٌ Surah Ali Imran, the third surah, ayah 178. With the explanation, Let not those who disbelieve think that our delaying punishment for them is something that is good for them. Rather, we delay their punishment for them so that they can increase in sin. And then there will be a humiliating punishment for them. Sheikh said, so the believer must always keep this point in his mind. But this is something that will not be comprehended except by people who have understanding of the religion, people of knowledge, people of insight, and people with correct outlook. And then the Shaykh, Rahim, he said, then the Shaykh, Rahimahullah, said, so let the person of sound intellect who sincere, sincerely wishes good for himself, let him carefully consider this. Sheikh Fawzan said, so he should consider this point carefully. And it is the matter of Allah's actions, those things which Allah the Most High does with regard to his servants. And he should realize and know that Allah does not do anything in that regard except for a wise purpose and, sec and except in accordance with what he has pre-decreed and ordained. So nothing happens in this creation except for a wise purpose and in accordance with what Allah has ordained and decreed. And also Allah never made any promise except that he will certainly fulfill it. And also each person should consider himself how he reacts with regard to events, that these events that occur. What does he say when something which he dislikes happens? Whether it happens to himself or someone else, what does he say? Therefore, Imam Ibn al-Qayyim said, and most of the people, they have evil thoughts about Allah with regard to those affairs particular to them or with regard to what happens to the rest of the people. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, so this is to be found in the descendants of Adam. <coughs> in some of them, that if you were to examine, no matter who you examine, you will find you will find them raising obje objections to that which Allah has decreed and blaming it. Sheikh al-Fawzan said, just as happened with Iblis and the result that was produced by the haughtiness of Iblis and the objections he raised against Allah, the Majestic and Most High. And consider the case of Iblis. 
and what led him to what, what he ended up with, what led him to that. Objection against things Allah had decreed. Then the Sheikh said, and likewise with regard to anyone who resembles him, those who raise objections against Allah with regard to the actions that Allah, the perfect and most high, does, and how he acts within his sovereignty. He, the majestic and most high. Those who say that what ought to happen is such and such. Then Ibn Qayyim said, so examine yourself and see if you are free of this. Sheikh Al-Fawzan said, so it's obligatory that each person never does tazkiyah of himself. He never praises and makes recommendation for himself. Ever. Allah, the Majestic and Most High said, وَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Surah Al-Najm, the 53rd Surah, Ayah 32. With the explanation, do not ascribe piety to yourselves. And he's saying, أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِينَ يُزَكُّونَ أَنفُسَهُمْ بَلِ اللَّهُ يُزَكِّي مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَلَا وَلَا يُظْلَمُونَ فَتِيلًا Surah Al-Nisa, the 4th Surah, Ayah 49. With the explanation, Will you not look at those who declare themselves good and pure? Rather, it is Allah who purifies whomever he wishes and they will never be oppressed even by the amount of the thread to be found clinging to a date stone. Sheikh Al-Fawzan said, So a person should not do tazkiyah of himself. He should not praise and recommend himself. He should not praise himself and not become satisfied and amazed with himself and think that he is perfect and that he is from the chosen ones. Rather, the person should always accuse himself of falling short with regard to the rights of Allah the Most High. And as for tazkiyah, purification, in the, which has been praised by Allah the Most High for, for its people, for those who purify themselves, do tazkiyah of themselves, mean purification. In his saying, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا Surah Al-Shams, the 91st Surah, Ayah 9. That those who purify their souls are successful. Then what is meant here by purifying the souls? Means pure, those who purify themselves by doing righteous and correct actions and leaving off evil actions. This is purification of the souls. And by occupying yourself with correct and righteous actions and causing yourself to abstain from evil actions. So therefore, there is a tazkiyah, a purification, or a declaration of purification which is forbidden, which is to become amazed with yourself and to start praising yourself. And there is a tazkiyah, a purification, which is commanded, which means to be upon goodness and, uh, and repentance and righteous and correct actions. As occurs in the ayah from Surah Shams, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَ Those who purify their souls are the successful ones. And Allah has even threatened those who do not purify themselves. For he said, he the Most High, وَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ Surah Fussilat, ayah 41, or rather Surah 41, ayah 6 to 7 with the explanation and woe to the mushriks those who do not give the zakat or in another explanation those who do not purify themselves Sheikh Al-Fawzan said because some of the people of tafsir say about the zakat here that what it means is tazkiyat nafs purifying their souls because this ayah was sent down in Mecca and the obligatory zakat of wealth was not sent down until Medina. So in other words, they hold that this ayah means not zakat of the wealth, but zakat, purification of the souls. And also, likewise, with regard to the saying of Allah the Most High, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِلزَّكَاةِ فَاعِلُونَ Surah Al-Mu'minun, the 23rd Surah, Ayah 4, with the explanation, and those who do the zakat, he said, because what is meant by zakat in this ayah, is zakat of the soul, purifying the soul. Because again, this ayah was sent down in Mecca. 
so purifying the soul through righteous and correct actions is desirable and commanded. And he said, as for the saying of Ibn al-Qayyim, so examine yourself. Are you free of this? Sheikh Fawzan said, so therefore do not become preoccupied with the shortcomings of the rest of the people and forget yourself. Rather examine yourself. Are you free from raising any objections to Allah's decrees and free from blaming Allah's, what Allah has ordained? and free of contradicting Allah, the Perfect and Most High, with regard to events that occur. His saying, for intanju minha, if you are saved from that, meaning from this affliction, then you have been saved from something tremendous. And if not, then I don't think you will be saved at all. Sheikh Fawzan ends this chapter by saying, so this is a chapter which is in reality a very great chapter and a tremendous chapter and whoever wishes increase in, spe- in this speech which is very good then let him refer to back to the original book Zadul Ma'ad where the author speaks about the battle of Uhud and what happened with regard to the trials upon the Muslims there and what the hypocrites said in this battle then Sheikh Al-Fawzan said the points of benefit that can be taken from these two ayahs and their explanation and he brings six points of benefit firstly that husn of dhan having good thoughts with regard to Allah the mighty and majestic is an obligation from the obligations of tawheed secondly that having the opposite having evil thoughts with regard to Allah the perfect and most high negates tawheed or negates its perfection It will negate the very basis of Tawheed altogether if these evil thoughts increase to such an extent and become so great and become something continual for the person. Or these evil thoughts will negate the completion of Tawheed if it is just something that appears for the person and is something just slight. I mean, it just appears and passes away and is just something slight or is just a suggestion in his mind alone and he does not speak with it upon his tongue but if he speaks with these evil thoughts then he will, neg- he will be negating Tawheed the third issue is that this contains these ayat contain an affirmation of Allah's ordainment and pre-decree Al-Qadha wal Qadr and that whatever disasters and desirable things and whatever things that people dislike and whatever enjoyments things that they enjoy happen all of this occurs by the ordainment and decree of Allah the fourth matter that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has no share of control over events so we do not seek attachment to him for that sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rather attachment is sought we seek to attach our hearts to Allah (coughs) Because all of the affairs are for Allah, the Majestic and Most High. Not for the Messenger, nor for anyone else besides Him. Command is not for the Messenger, nor for anyone else besides Him. Just as Allah, the Majestic and Most High said, لَيْسَ لَكَ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ شَيْءٍ أَوْ يَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَوْ يُعَذِّبَهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ ظَالِمُونَ Surah Ali Imran, the third surah, Ayah 128. With the explanation, not for you, O Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is the decision whether Allah accepts their repentance, or whether Allah guides them to repent and accept their repentance, or whether He punishes them, because they were wrongdoers. Sheikh said, so here in this ayah, it came down with regard to the fact that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made supplication against some of the people of Mecca. So Allah rebuked him for that with this ayah. لَيْسَ لَكَ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ شَيْءٍ أَوْ يَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَوْ يُعَذِّبَهُمْ Not for you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the decision. It's not for you at all whether Allah guides them to repent or punishes them. The Shaykh said,